Dude, all these pictures are blurry. Come over here and check out this pic. Thank you. Oh, that's uh, that is pretty blurry. It's pretty bad. I just got to work on being still. That's right. Oh, we're on this. Okay. Oh, hey guys. Um, don't mind us. We're just don't mind the costumes. We're just dressing up for Halloween. There's Halloween in it, you know. Just. Uh, Anyway, what we really had you here for today, we were going to go over some wrist goniometry, gonia, wrist goniometry, can do it. wrist gonium. Today we're just going to talk about measuring the wrist and how to do that with a goniometer. All right, so first we're going to do wrist flexion. We're going to measure wrist flexion, and um, as far as patient positioning. If you have an arm wedge, I'd say just bring them over the edge a little bit so you have a free area for them to move in. As far as goniometer placement for um, a lot of these, we're going with the ASHT, American Society of Hand Therapists recommendations for goniometer placement. So for wrist flexion, the stationary arm is going over the dorsum of the forearm and the moving arm is going to run parallel to the dorsal surface of the third metacarpal. And your fulcrum, you're going to want it to spin directly over the carpus and you'll see where the bend in the wrist is as the patient's going into wrist flexion. And so go ahead and bend your wrist down. So I'm measuring wrist flexion here, a couple of tips. One, make sure that your goniometer doesn't buck up off of the arm like that because it's gonna give you an incorrect measurement. Make sure it stays flush against the skin. And then one other tip would be if the patient has their fingers uh, forcefully flexed, have them go ahead and just relax their fingers because the tension that is on the EDC when the fingers are flexed will mess with the amount of wrist flexion that you can attain. And so I would just have them re relax their fingers and then they could probably achieve most of the time more of a wrist flexion uh, movement there. So there's wrist flexion. All right, so next we're going to work on wrist extension. Uh, gonna measure that and normally, according to ASHT, we would measure that on the volar surface of the wrist. But when you're having an anomaly, like today we have Spider-Man and he won't move his hand from this position, even though I've asked him to several times. So we're gonna do it from the dorsal surface of the wrist. So you place your goniometer the same way, stationary arm over the dorsal aspect of the forearm and the moving arm over the par running parallel to the dorsal aspect of the third metacarpal. And just have them come into wrist extension, making sure the goniometer is flush with the skin there and there's your wrist extension measurement. And there are a couple of alternative ways to measure wrist extension flexion, actually all these motions. Um, but one thing I would say is whatever clinic or setting you're working in, make sure that you and all the other therapists there are on the same page and that um, there's consistency across the board with whatever method you choose so that you can get consistent um, goniometry measurements. Okay, so unlike wrist flexion and extension, uh, for radial and ulnar deviation of the wrist, there's not uh, many different ways to measure that. Most people are pretty consistent um, with this. Typically, we... Um, run our finger along the line of the third metacarpal. We go down to the base of it, um, and you're gonna be, you can almost find a little divot there, and you're gonna be kinda right over the base of the third metacarpal and the capitate. Um, you're gonna put your axis or your fulcrum right at that level. Uh, your stable arm is gonna be up the uh, radius and ulna, up the dorsal forearm. Uh, your movable arm down here is gonna be right in line with the third metacarpal. You'll ask your patient to move in whichever direction you're measuring. So let's go move it towards the thumb as far as you can go. Um, we'll take that movable arm, put it right over that third metacarpal. We've got about 18 degrees here um, for radial deviation. Typical or normal motion is usually around 20 degrees, so that's pretty good. We'll have him come back to center and to measure ulnar deviation. And, and you can always remove that goniometer and make sure that your axis is still in the right spot. Um, now we're going to go ulnar, so move towards the pinky side for me. Again, we're gonna move that movable arm, line it up with the third metacarpal, right on 30 degrees, which is considered normal for ulnar deviation of the wrist. Hey guys, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. We hope you learned something today and that this was helpful to you in some way. So you know our goal for this channel, The Upper Hand, is to give you guys the upper hand as you seek to better understand conditions of the upper extremity and just all topics related to occupational therapy in general. So please take a second out of your day, make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel so that you can be sure that you're going to see all of our upcoming videos. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you next time.